If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about authors that need to start publishing more books, like now, because I need more in my life. I purposely chose authors that I have read at least two books from and that aren't publishing anything new in 2021. That's the line I threw. So why did I put an H there? Why are H is so hard? <laughs> Eventually, I think I'm just gonna start doing my videos in French and we're all gonna have to deal with it. So I chose a couple authors that I enjoy, that I want to read more books from. Some of them haven't published in years. Some of them they have like last year, but I mean, it's my video, my, my rules. So let's do this. First author is Matt Haig. I have read these three books by him and I do own three other books on my shelves. So like I have more content to read from him. But seriously, I uh, still need more content. So dude, hopefully you don't mind me saying that, but dude, I'm going to need you to start publishing a book a year. I don't think it's too much to ask. I mean, how hard can it be? So step it up. Uh, you did publish <laughs> last year, The Midnight Library, which I have been raving about. It is a contemporary kind of sci-fi twist to it. You're following this woman who attempts suicide and ends up between uh, life and death this library where she gets to try a few different books that are a different version of her life. I'm gonna go quickly through the books because it's mostly about the authors, not the books. Uh, then we have The Humans. I've also raved about it a lot. Kind of, again, contemporary sci-fi. You're following this alien sent to Earth to kill this person that found this math equation that we're not ready for. And then they have to figure out what it is to be human. Starts funny, becomes more serious. And then Reasons to Stay Alive, which is a nonfiction about depression, which uh, is a topic that the author tends to include, as you can see in his books, it's something that he's going through. And I loved all three of these, would recommend all three of these. And like I said, I do have three other books, I believe on my shelf by him, which wink, wink, uh, if you like to know what's coming up, I'm planning a new vlogging uh, series where I will be reading more from authors that I love because I don't know why I don't do that more. So yes, love him. Again, he did publish this one last year, but like what? what's next? What's next? When can I get more? Next, we need to talk about Madeline Miller because um, she hasn't published since 2018, which is way too long for me to wait. Um, <laughs> I had read Circe, which is a fantasy book retelling about Circe. And then we all know also about The Song of Achilles, which is a retelling about Achilles. She writes these kind of fantasy books, which I love. I want more retelling. She has announced that she is planning on doing a retelling of The Tempest by Shakespeare's, which that's fine. Don't get me wrong. I, I will read it. Uh, I haven't read the two little, I think they're novellas that she has online, which eventually I should get around to reading them. But real talk, I love these. But what I really want and what we all really want, let's, let's just say it, we need a retelling of Medusa. Like, I will read everything else you write, but I will not sleep well until you write that book. So whenever you're ready, hopefully sooner rather than later, we need a retelling. Uh, if you like these kind of books, definitely do recommend them. I like how she writes them. Writing is beautiful. Definitely recommend the audiobooks too because they sound really well out loud. And uh, especially the narrator for Cersei, sh she needs to like talk to me every night for me to fall asleep. I, I just need that in my life. But yes, do recommend her books, obviously, but uh, Madeline Miller, step it up, step it up. Another author that needs to come back in her life because I don't know about you, but I'm desperate. Like I will take anything she writes anytime. Gillian Flynn. I have read three of her books. Technically, I haven't read Gone Girl, which <laughs> time to call me out. Eventually, we'll get around to reading it. I have watched a movie. I started a book, but like the beginning kind of, kind of slow. I don't really care about the husband. I, I want the female character because she writes messed up female characters, kind of morally gray, and I love them. I 100% resent the wave that followed her popularity because I cannot stand those domestic thrillers where it's like, oh, the husband is cheating and like she's an alcoholic to cope. And I don't care. I don't care. They're all called girl, woman, whatever. Don't like them. But she, she can do it because these women are interesting. They're complex. Again, I was saying morally gray and I I am rooting for them every single time. So I may have not read Gone Girl, but I have read Sharp Object, also watched a TV show, which I loved. And uh, I have read Dark Places. And then this short story novella that not a lot of people know about, but The Grown Up, 
which is also interesting. It's probably the weirdest one of her books, not gonna lie. And <laughs> let me bring you the first sentence because every time I'm like, what? I didn't stop giving hand jobs because I wasn't good at it. I stopped giving hand jobs because I was the best at it. <laughs> That's all. I'm not gonna even comment on it. That's Gillian Flynn for you. And I just want something else. I think we can all agree about it. Like she hasn't published in a while and she needs to come back. I mean, after we survived this whole pandemic, we need some Gillian Flynn. I'm not describing your books because you just need to read them without knowing anything else. Let's go with some nonfiction. Uh, John Ronson, dude, dude, what are you doing? Because you, you're not publishing books, that, that's what you're not doing. So you've been publicly shamed and the Psychopath Test, I believe, are the two books that I have read by him. I highly recommend the audiobooks if he is the one narrating them because he's very socially awkward, but like, I love him. I feel like in these kind of nonfiction books, you need to like the author because you're following him through the journey through whatever he's going with because his ideas, his topics are so weird, but in the best way possible. So one book about psychopaths and one about people that tweeted something dumb and had to deal with the consequences, which really interesting to see how differently the public reacts depending on the sex, the gender, the race of the person that did these things. And this was published in 2015, so I feel like I keep saying it, but I need a part two because so many more things have happened and we can collect more data. But yes, uh, John Ronson, publish something, do an audiobook. I need more awkward wholesomeness in my life. So definitely check him out, but I want more. An author that has only published two books and it's been years and I am sad. I don't even read that many YA contemporaries, but I'm so sad about it. Um, Jenny Nelson, I have read her two books. I would recommend starting if you love why contemporaries with disguise everywhere, which recurring team in her books, her two books, <laughs> things that, that are sad, like grief mainly. And in this one, you're following, I believe, a girl who lost her sister and she finds little uh, notes everywhere. I'm gonna keep it vague because it's a way contemporary, it's not very big. And I did enjoy it, but this one, this one is the one that I continuously rave about. Like I was saying, I don't read that many more white contemporaries. I feel like I'm too old. I don't really enjoy them unless they're coming of age and even then. Uh, this one is a mix of a few things, but I don't want to say too much because again, I do prefer going into these kind of books kind of blind just because there's not that much that happens. It's a white contemporary, but you're following twins who, uh, two different timelines. One of them, a uh, little boy, whenever they are 13, they get along. A lot of things happen for him it's like a coming of age story and for the girl when they are 16 and they don't get along you don't speak anymore you don't know what happened and at first i much preferred his story but then by the end her story how ouch uh <laughs> french um, but yeah definitely do recommend it the writing is definitely full of metaphors which some people didn't enjoy but i loved it highly recommend it and jenny nelson where are you I feel like I have read on Goodreads that you, you, there was something else on its way, but like there's no date or anything. It's been years and I'm dying here. Like, please. Next, I wanted to talk about Muir Lafferty. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that somewhat okay. I believe the author is Australian, but I, it looks like it wants to be pronounced French or so thinks my brain. But in this one, I love the really specific premise, which if you have any recommendations, please. You're following a dystopian version of a world where People can uh, save their memory and then if something happens to their body, they can just, you know, clone their body and be in that body. And you're following your crew on a spaceship and they wake up, not remember, remembering what happened, they all died and woke up in a new body. So it means that like someone on the ship killed them all. Who? Why? And loved it. Loved it. Uh, super fun premise. But I believe this is our only book. So I'm cheating here because I did say two books, but it's her only book. So I think it's not cheating. I would have read the second one if there was a second one. So please, whenever you're ready, you know, it's not like I'm waiting, but um, soon-ish, hopefully. And last but not least, I wanted to talk about Stuart Churton, which he has published about last year. It doesn't matter though, I, I want more. I have raved a lot about The Seven and a Half Deaths of Heaven and Hardcastle, which was his debut novel, which again, that's very specific premise of people being stuck. Uh, in this case, it's in a house, it's kind of a 
not a really a party, how do you call that? A celebration. And the main character has to figure out what happens because every night Evelyn Hartcastle dies and he has eight days to do so and every day he wakes up in a different body. He doesn't know who his other bodies are. He has no idea who is helping him, who is not helping him. And it's fun. It's very specific, but loved it. And a little similar, The Devil and Dark Water, which is his newest release of last year. And in this one, again, on a boat, there's someone killing people and there's a duo of detective on said boat and trying to figure out what happened. In both cases, I feel like the ending is the weakest point, but it doesn't matter. I really enjoyed Again, the super specific premise. The journey. I really enjoyed the journey. That That's what it is. So yes, please. Uh, if you can do a part two or like something similar to this one, I would I would desperately love you forever. So what about you guys? Uh, which authors do you love? And that hasn't published something hopefully more than a year. <laughs> and you just need to read more books by them because... They don't publish enough. I mean, not everyone can be Brendan Sanderson and publish like 10 million books every year, but they should be. Like you're an author. That's your job to write, you know? So <laughs> obviously again, tongue in cheek, I I'm not actually thinking that. Although, so that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in my next one very soon. Bye.